might be controversial. Um, but at the same time, yeah, I'd like to think, talk about like purpose and again, around art making. And here are two, next slide, please. Um, here are two examples of the artwork that he is making um, that amplifies um, the Black maternal health crisis of women who have passed um, or been killed um, due to, and I think, and I, I believe, and I've seen this happen at gatherings where he often gives these pieces to the family members of who have lost um, their parent and like, yeah, what an amazing gift to give. Um, and I just want to honor Shamani um, because uh, I believe, yeah, I just want to honor her like, uh, and say, uh, yeah, I'm sorry and thank you. And um, your spirit lives on. And next slide, please. And next I want to talk about Bruce McIntyre. Um, he's of the Save a Rose Foundation. And I think this was my personal trend, like where the word, where um, I moved from art as meditation to art as um, activism really um, ignited me personally. Um, so this February, he had a call to community via Instagram, I'm sure other platforms to create art in his partner's honor, Amber Rose Isaac, on her birthday. And it was, yeah, make art in her honor. It was pretty loose, but again, as an artist, I thought like, I don't often see calls to action that speak to me that way. Um, so that he asked to make art in his partner's honor, I was like, hell yeah. Um, uh, and so, yeah, I mean, and so at a, at a, so I also host on Just First Place a, a art and meditation class. And at this one particularly, I didn't have much thought, like I want to be more intentional about my art and activism. So I hadn't had much thought of how to incorporate it at the time, but we were end of our session. And then um, I asked the participants, I was like, I am right now, would you be interested in making art? And um, Amber's honor. And it gave me a way um, that I hope to build on to talk about Black maternal health. And, um, and so I was able to give Amber's and Bruce's story and, and then we made art and then we were able to, uh, you know, build on that conversation. I was able to um, share my, my understanding of the crisis and folks were, it was a safe place to ask questions. Again, I'm always surprised um, what people don't know, but that's okay as well. Um, so um, yeah, it just ignited um, sparks that through art making a conversation can start um, and then people can learn. Cause uh, you know, often I guess I, I, I've, I've done a lot of my learning through what feels more, a little bit more academic feels and presentations, which is totally awesome. But maybe that's hissing, hitting, missing the mark for some other folks. So that's why, again, I want to embrace other methods of um, activating and teaching <laughs> um, the community. Um, I'm gonna share next slide is, just the, the artwork I did make in Amber's honor and that I did send to Bruce too. And that's also, I felt like a big community building. Like that's how I was able to very early build a relationship with him and send that and just share my, my, um, my gratitude for um, his work and, um, and his strength. And I, you know, I hate his position that he's in to have to be so inspiring, but it is, um, it's it's amazing in my opinion i love your little plate <laughs> <laughs> and then of course my dear friend fa um, and i think that also is sort of how uh, fa has a ceramic plate with the candles on it um it's become part of my uh my ritual and like what a kind you know again like and that's so meaningful for someone who I am inspired by Efe um how she speaks and carries herself and I've been in so many spaces like I do remember your first um the first time you came to my consciousness was at the at Weeksville at the doula bill I don't know what that was discussion <laughs> or um information session and yeah you know, we that, gave the call and we see I remember yeah. that day. Yeah. Yeah. That was just a really, and you know, you spoke and um, just with that passion. And I know, I, I, I know that's just natural to you, it seems, uh, but also, um, you know, and I can also think about it, Shaisa's um, 
are the protest or outside of Woodhall, Woodhall just sort of, um, yeah, seeing, seeing you give your all. I mean, that was spirit and anger and all of it, but it also, like, it was otherworldly. And I just want to acknowledge, like, and have that plate be part of my, like, that you're part of my, um, has become part of my ritual is hugely meaningful and you are super inspiring and like there you are there is like a piece of art <laughs> that is part of my art of activism and how it just continues to build so thank you fa i never consider myself an artist so yeah i, uh, I mean i, I was think you are you... pottery it just kind of happened right yeah but I think, yeah, I mean, that's something we can discuss later too, is sort of like, I don't, and that's sort of how my art of meditation, I do consider myself an artist, but it was um, the beginning stages, it just happened. I mean, I should, probably should show you, it was, it was literally doodling, you know, it wasn't like, I'm going to sit and make a portrait. That's, that's often how I make art, you know, very um, representational. So this was also, when I go back to Bell Hook's quote, it was liberating, like, stop making art. Uh, I mean, and I enjoy making portraits that I think they're meaningful, but like really break free of um, what art is <laughs> and how it's, you know, let it flow a little bit. Um, so anyways, I, so yeah, overall, I just wanted to say I got my mental wheels turning after um, my just birth um, space presentation on ways to activate the community through art making and that art making together can be a springboard for sharing and learning. So that's sort of, you know, that's my goal is like, how can we keep, how, how can we make art and to keep, to continue to learn and share between each other? And to acknowledge that we do come to understanding from many different avenues. And I believe that our art making is underused. So that's sort of where my personal goal um, is to sort of like to uplift art making and um, for a, a, a use of activism and um, knowledge sharing. So next slide. Oops. So I also like want to shift gears a little bit, and I might not have all the words to explain it, but I all uh, but um, to acknowledge aesthetics. So the the art and aesthetics of a black Christian midwife. And um, in a recent Instagram post, the midwife. And please help me if I'm mispronouncing the name, but Rasha. Tahini Queen, Instagram handle Crimson Fig, um, shares her postpartum practice and ritual with him community. And this person does just, I, you know, I follow him on Instagram, but they embody like, for me, like art as everything <laughs> and all like they encompass the universe, how they present themselves, how I think their home looks, how their work is. And, um, and so, Rasha, <laughs> yay, lucky person. Um, all the intention and care that she provided to her client. So there was a recent post um, about her postpart, like a postpartum visit. And I am a postpartum doula. And um, so I'm always also breaking, trying to un unlearn, uh, donor certified in that, in my opinion, um, did not equip me to be a postpartum doula. It was through connecting to my art making and my artistic self and my truth where then that's where I was able to be a better or a, a more authentic, more in my, I, yeah, just a more in tune um, doula. But I was really touched. Uh, so, um, so I think her care, uh, I don't think their care model is not new, but in this day and age, it's not the norm. And um, I was especially touched. Um, she hand stitched a fabric bag for the herbs used in a client's postpartum soap. And um, I love crafting. And I was like, wow, why do I not have a needle and thread and muslin in my bag? Like what an amazing, and um, like that was just really expansive to me. Um, and um, that, yeah, the act was like the birth worker was. And so I want to acknowledge sort of um, the artisan as all and find ways to bring that forth in our everyday lives. And that's sort of what that um, symbolized for me. And um, so, yeah, I want us to think about uh, what, like, yeah, it just, again, keep the wheels turning of what art is and how do we embody it and how do we keep moving it forward? And, um, and yeah, and thinking about like, even um, F.A., how you gave me that bowl. Yeah, that was like, a, like 
again, like I don't have it for me, it's more like spirit feeling and that, that it's, a, uh, that it's, it's in my rituals. Um, but I feel like there is something there <laughs> that, um, and maybe someone else has the words for, but to like, yeah, art and aesthetics. And then that's, um, and the activism and that to come to bring that all forward. Um, so yeah, life is art, art is activism. In conclusion, I'd love for to listen and be part of a discussion about folks' visions and thoughts on art as activism and its role in a futuristic community. So when that commune opens, F.A., I want to be the sign maker. I want to be the card maker. I want to be the artist in the community. Um, I want to be, yeah, I want to paint doorways. <laughs> um, I want to set the table. The, I, those, those, uh, um, I guess that's my daydream in my elder years. Um, and reproductive future means expansive thoughts and actions. As a parent, doula artist, I'm seeking to be in community with folks whose purpose is to make art as a form of activism and healing. So I do think there's a duality also with activism and healing. Um, I believe art is an inclusive space to discover self and explore, learn, and teach and mourn celebrate, remember, and create change. In this time of healing, in this time, healing feels like active act, activism and life is art. There's an untapped power in art making that I'd like to explore with fellow artists, activists, parents, birth workers, the whole spectrum. So, um, so yeah, right now I'd like to open up to all of us, but here's, here are my handles. If anyone wants to continue this conversation or has any feedback or visions, um, sorry, next slide, F.A., thank you. Um, yeah, there's my contacts, but um, yeah, that sort of sums up my presentation. And right now I'd like to open up for discussion or if F.A. has any, yeah, any questions, <laughs> um, let's go. And I'll, I'll look at the chat or if maybe F.A. can um, tell me what's going on in the chat. I wanted to go back to the uh, questions to community. Oh, thank you. To answer as well. I put at the end, uh, when you were talking about Rasha, mm -hmm. when I first met her in person, we did a training in Hawaii. Um, and I was like, what do I bring as a gift? I didn't know what to bring. And then I, it immediately prompted me, like she's always making things. So like I gifted her fabric to, I don't know, make pants and overalls and baby hangers. I, I always see that she's threading things. I learned how to quilt at a young age. I think I was in the fifth grade, fourth grade, fifth grade. There was a program in my school and they were after school program for quilting. Um, before the patriarchy, <laughs> we had a lot of, um, before the patriarchy was a movement school, we had a lot of programs around home ec. And I learned how to quilt, but I never really did anything with it. But I had this skill, like I hand pants when I need to, I saw on buttons when I need to. Um, but like how you mentioned about art being, all of us being artists, I never thought of it that way because it was always presented as this natural ability that you were born with, um, not something that you learn. So like when I was in band and orchestra, I didn't consider myself an artist because I could read music. I couldn't play by ear. And because I was taught how to read music, not because I could play by ear and all that stuff. So these days I do wanna pick up my instruments again. I do wanna pick up pottery and different arts as a way to express myself that isn't rage, I do feel like it's a, um, it's what people want to see often, but it's not what makes me feel good. And I don't feel like I communicate the best verbally, even though folks feel that it, what it is. I don't feel like I communicate myself the best verbally, if that makes sense. Um, makes sense to me, but not, <laughs> not, not that you don't, but more, right. but yeah, I think that, the, I mean, I think that you're saying what, I, it's a big yes for me, because I think mm -hmm. there's, um, no matter how we outwardly present, I think there's more, right, <laughs> that we can dig into, and, and I, I, I think art making is that gateway, or crafting, or, <laughs> um, so, thank you. Thank you. Does anyone else want to answer any of these questions on the screen? Um, 
I really like that. Does art make art making have healing properties? I think it does hormonally for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I think hormonally for sure it definitely um, shifts. You know the what do you call it? The synapses connecting in the brain and the connections that you're making when you're reading versus when you're drawing versus when you're dancing um, and what that looks like. Yeah, I mean, I've had to in times, especially menstrual times and also like perimenopausal, which I'm deep into right now um, is, yeah, I think that's a great, like connecting to that rage because I, I've, I've had that, um, personal push and pull of like, do you make art right now? Like kind of feeling honestly disconnected from it. But that's maybe when you really do need to like, just move for me, it's paint <laughs> across the paper and it is, it's regulating. Cause yeah, I think all you wanna do is, or I, when I hear rage, um, yeah, I would destroy some shit and I wanna be self-destructive. <laughs> Same. <laughs> Well, fellow cap, um, I don't know, you know, of course, I don't know if that's a January 19th thing or it's, Capricorn, it's a, It or was very everybody. apparent when I was in my early 20s and as late teens, it was, right. that was what I would go to for, it was like explosive rage. Yep. And now the explosive rage is more just like internal and fucking with your organs. So now I'm just like, okay, you got to move something else. Yes, <laughs> yes, 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 yes. yes, yes. Riley put in the comments, currently driving, um, but it took me many years to claim the artist's identity and that work alone brought my inner body, brought my inner child spirit back into my body. It helped me to remember we are all artists and the sanctity of that. Death helped me to process wage, woo. Yay, that's so, like, it's, again, just nice to hear that other people are processing the world for that. And I, I can really relate to the inner child because that's what, when I started my art and meditation journey, I was like, why do, why do I make art? And I want to make art like I did when I was 13 or like, how, you know, I, I just want to sit down and make it. And I don't want to think about like if people like it or, you know, I, I want to make it for me. And, um, but kind of from that child space where um, it wasn't, I don't know, at that time, it wasn't as heavy, <laughs> even though it was- And it's also the only time that it's introduced to us as a, like a, an activity, you know, right. give crayons and color pencils and paint to children, but nobody hands that to adults when we go places. It's, here's a magazine, here's right. TV, and now you wait for whatever meeting or, you know, even when you go see a healthcare provider, it's not, the children's space is play and art and then our space is fed messages on what um they want us to believe or what us to be able to challenge us i guess in that way i do feel that the, the kid spirit is something that we don't allow into our lives after a certain age anymore definitely i mean you it's at, i Many moons ago, I was an art teacher, and it, it is amazing, even a five-year-old quickly also, that yes, you give that, but even a five-year-old will say they can at some point draw or do a thing, you know, because it's not as representational as, you know, kid B, but um, but that's something also as, as an art teacher, and I really wanted to, at that time, um, debunk you know like don't give up already <laughs> you know and no and I and exactly don't uh although I believe we're all artists it doesn't if you know if, you, if you're not into it, you're not into it that's cool too but um I yeah now I want to walk into an art store and just buy stuff <laughs> yeah I mean that's also um but yeah go for it and, and you make me realize like how cool that would be to tell more just have some uh pencils and pens at a waiting room i mean that's that's an amazing idea to me <laughs> especially you know waiting for to see a gyn or waiting to see a midwife um we i mean we have this white coat syndrome right and so we're in the waiting room like okay i'm gonna go through all these questions i'm gonna do all these things and then when you get in there it's your there's this brain fart is this blankness because there's this hierarchy power over your body um, 
and I wish I could just go in but like well here's some paintings of what I would like my pap smear to look like <laughs> oh I, I mean I, you're blowing my mind I really do think there is like you know or can we have hip, equipped our clients with those you know with that draw I mean you know it's another thing to bring but um as a way to wait through that experience or and I always for for me it was a lot of um earlier on in my journey, like manifesting um, certain things in my life, like maybe you can manifest that um, vision for your birth or that appointment a little bit more clear if you could you could draw it or paint it or um, if we had other ways of communicating. Yeah. Exactly, that were um, valid or accepted. So that's, um, yes, so this is the conversation that I would like to have more, you know, with more people and continue this because right now you're, um, you're expanding my idea of that waiting room experience, so. Um, thank you, Kara. This has been you. really beautiful. Um, thank you all who joined us today. If you want to stay connected, um, her information's on the screen, kiradoyette.com, xoxo, kb at gmail.com. Yeah. I wanted to make sure I didn't say an extra XO. <laughs> extra, extra. Instagram as well. And, and if you forget, you can always get in touch with Dora Chronicles and I will direct you straight to them. Um, thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.